February 9th, 2023. The deadline has been hit. Three o'clock. You can't trade anybody after this. If a deal was put into the NBA offices, it can certainly be announced later on. But no more discussions. Put your pencils down. The test is over. And there have been some major moves, obviously. But the biggest one is, while you were sleeping, Kevin Durant was traded to the Phoenix Suns. And that stops and caps a five-year period in Nets history that really never existed. Think about it. Durant, Irving. Harden, three of the greatest players in NBA history, and they got one playoff series win out of it. They are right back to where they were before the big two came and then before Harden uh, was uh, acquired in a trade from the Rockets. That's it. They have a lot of draft picks. They, got a, they have a good young team. Don't think the Nets have hit rock bottom. They're not getting Wembyana. They're not doing that. They're not going to miss out on the playoffs. They'll probably be a play-in team. They've got a decent team. But they are right back to where they were before all of this started, when they had a decent team, and they were 42 and 40, and Kenny Atkinson was the coach. That's it. This five-year period will be a laughing stock in all of sports history when they look at what the Nets did and the quality of the players that they brought in, and now they have nothing. They let two guys completely demolish five years of their existence. Think about it. Two guys. Two guys, and I think the biggest laughing stock in all of this, and I've been listening to all the shows today, and this has not come up. The biggest laughing stock to me is Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was led by his nose by Kyrie Irving, who completely, single-handedly demolished the Brooklyn Nets and everything they stand for. And Kevin Durant went, went, went along for the ride like a little lamb when he could have stayed in Golden State and picked up, we know, at least one more championship, probably two or three, and... His reason for coming to Brooklyn, he and Kyrie wanted to do something special together. Well, you know what? He wanted to go to Phoenix, and now he's going to join another team with a lot of stars. And he left the team with better stars and better players to do something that never happened. And Kyrie Irving made him look like a complete fool. A complete fool. He might win a championship in Phoenix, but what happened? Five years of his career, one because of an injury, the other four years completely wiped away because he followed a guy down the primrose path. And what did that guy do? The guy did nothing but really submarine everything that the Nets tried to do, including the Harden situation. The reason Harden demanded a trade was because of Kyrie Irving. And, and you know what? Um, Kevin Durant stood back and let it happen. He was so docile throughout all of this. He never said anything publicly. And the second they traded Kyrie, he obviously told Nets management, I want to go as well. Laughing stock. Laughing stock. He's a laughing stock. And the Nets, where the way this was mishandled, and I think they've recovered nicely, guys, because I don't think it's a terrible trade that they made with Phoenix, but they have no chance to win a championship, and they probably won't have a chance to win a championship until they take some of the draft picks they got and trade for a big-time player, which is where it starts all over again five years ago. It's stunning. It, it will be studied in classes in all sports on what not to do and how not to give the players that much power when well, you already acquire them. Now, did they get it wrong trying to build the super team? No. Or did, did they just get the wrong players? I think they got the wrong players. I, I think they just got the wrong players. Now, listen, you want to do it the right way, whatever the right way may be, but it just seems like you draft well, you make shrewd trades, and you build a championship team. You try to take the easy way out and you usually get slapped. But the thing that keeps circling back to is, is that they just got the wrong players. You know, Kyrie's an issue. And KD, it's just, I don't know if I can come up with another comparable. This is one of the top five players in the NBA. This is one of the greats of all time. And, and he's being led by, by a lesser player. And a Kyrie's a great happened. player. He's not KD. So, like, I don't understand how you, you, you're not the alpha male in the relationship. You're not the alpha male on the team. People should be wanting to play with Kevin Durant, following him around. Instead, he seems to follow everybody else. I'll go to Golden State, and I'll win. Oh, I'll, I'll go hitch my wagon to Kyrie, Never, at least publicly, never criticized the guy, never went public to say how he ruined your chances of winning a championship in Brooklyn, you know, and then, and then slinks out to Phoenix, and we'll see how it ends up going from there. But 
God, what an alpha dog on the court, but just not much leadership or really any kind of resolve at all from Duran. Really soft. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's the whole thing is so disappointing and embarrassing. I, I, I suppose there's a world I'm sure we'll hear from someone today. At least someone will call up and defend this and say that the, uh, you know, we don't understand and the Nets were horrible and all of this. And, and I'm not saying the Nets were perfect because I think they made some mistakes along the way. But by and large, it truly is one of the great disappointments of all time. And, man, when you think about the, 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 the years wasted on Durant's career, for like, you're right, Michael. Like, when, when we one day, when he goes to the Hall of Fame as a first ballot Hall of Famer, because, Don, this is a guy in Kevin Durant. He could be a top ten player who ever yep. lived, okay? We, when we're looking at his ledger when he goes into the Hall of Fame five years after the, the day of his last game, we will look at this period and go, what, what, what was that again? Oh, yeah, that nonsense. And you're going to skip over it. And, man, most people aren't LeBron James. They don't play for 20 years. You can't afford to miss four years with nonsense. And that's what happened here. It, it, it is exactly what happened. He frittered away five years of his prime. Now, the Achilles, there's nothing he could do. Golden State wanted him back. So he decided to hitch his wagon to a lesser player, a guy who obviously has issues, which he never, it seems, addressed with him, and he let the team be systematically destroyed by one man. And I don't think you could blame Sean Marks. As Don said, how could you blame anybody? Any GM or owner of an NBA team would have taken a swing with Durant and mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving. Now, I think where Sean Marks made the mistake was the, was the James Harden situation. And James Harden was a really, he, he was painted as the really bad guy who wanted out of Houston and then all of a sudden wanted out of, um, of Brooklyn. But you know what? He got it. He wasn't going to put up the nonsense like Durant. He got it that Kyrie was really the guy behind systematically destroying what they were trying to build. He wanted out right away. He knew, I'm not going to stand here and, and be led by this lesser player. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. So it, now in retrospect, to me, Harden doesn't look like a bad guy. Harden looks like a guy with some foresight and some intestinal fortitude, which Kevin Durant never had. Harden said, get me out of here now. Kevin Durant continued, continued to, like, bow down to Kyrie Irving. It's ridiculous. I'll never understand it. And he cost himself two or three rings. He could have easily survived and thrived in Golden State with better players and a guy like Steph Curry, who is complete uh, opposite of it, Kyrie Irving. It, it, and then it, it, Kyrie it. Irving yesterday, he scores 24 points when Dallas beats the Clippers in L.A. And after the game, after the uh, I'm so glad for Durant to get out of there. Shut up, Kyrie. I know. And he also said, now that we're both in the Western Conference, we'll get a chance to see each other. See each other? You play together. You could have seen each other every single day. God, if you didn't know any better, you just think that, like, KD owed Kyrie a favor or something. Like, it just, it's just weird. Like, what's the backstory of not only following this guy to Brooklyn, but just like never showing any leadership whatsoever during any of the stuff that was going on, at least publicly. And I don't think anything was happening privately either. Very weird and just a shame. And now Brooklyn goes back to what they were, a very good general manager. They're both a good team. You know, they, they may not be as relevant as they were during this whole thing, but really the relevancy was all just knocking them and making fun of them and not living up to expectations. So the, the, the go go back to obscurity, but you know what? I think at the end of the day, they'll probably have a better chance to win now. As and crazy all, as that is I, to say. I think all fans want is a little honesty from Durant. Stop singing the praises of Kyrie. Kyrie was the guy who destroyed this. So the, the big three that they got, they had three of the best players. Think about that in NBA history on the team. I believe they played... Um, 16 games together. 16 games where all three are on the court. They were 13 and three. <laughs> They're 13 and three, so it, it could have worked. Oh, yeah. Except for the egos and the strangeness of Kyrie Irving. Harden recognized it, and Durant was the supplicant here. He just laid back and said, well, uh, whatever you want to do, uh, uh, you're, the, you're the boss. You're the boss. You're the great, one of the greatest players of all time. You're going to finish second to LeBron in points scored in NBA history, and you're letting this guy lead you down the primrose path? It's amazing to me.